Hi there. A question that comes up all the time and I always forget to answer is how to use an orchestral controller if you're wanting to actually compose music, i.e. use both hands, which is how I compose music like many of you. I just thought I'd take you through my process really. And what I tend to do is my preferred sound, Kel Surprise, is Flautanda, and I'm currently a big fan of combining both the A and B string bands in Albion Neo. To, it's a it's a very fragile sounding flautando indeed. Basically, what I do, I'm I'm using this nuances um, or nuance device that's handmade by Pierre with Love Nuance Controller .fr France. I, I know that this isn't Pierre's full time kind of job. He's a composer, I believe. I tend to take my monogram on the road because it's modular. This for me just has the right amount of resistance and just a very familiar feel um, with the faders. And I've got used to the throw and it's fantastic. And expression, modulation, vibrato. So that's 11, one, and I think is it 23 or something. Now, a lot of people put it as one 11 going in uh, numeric sequence, but the thing is your, and I know I've said this many times, this finger is much more agile than this. And really whilst this is controlling the balance, the expression, so where the instrument or instruments are sitting within the mix, this is controlling the dynamic layers, the timbre, if you will. So you'll see that it, it's much more about that than uh, this finger. I just find a nominal uh, volume, which is just about 90% there and midway in the dynamic range and set the nominal volume here, always give it a little wiggle at the beginning so your computer knows where to go back to, if you will. So what I then tend to do is just literally play the expression data in live over the top. So if we have a look here, there we've got all of the juicy stuff. So you can see that the expression is just slightly less detailed than the modulation. What I'm going to do is just, just take this note on a little bit because it just sounds like it's stopping quite unnaturally. So maybe to there. Right, first thing I usually look at beyond that is it's a great kind of pad sound, uh, but to really bring it to life, you've got to imagine that each finger, if you will, or each voice is a separate section. So the first thing you'll hear here is that pedal note. I can't control the independent levels of each voice. So what I'm gonna do is just simply duplicate just really eke out these notes that sit on top or underneath these big pedal sections. So then what we need to do is just remove those here so we're not just duplicating and going flangeological. Okay, there we go. Then we can just simply adjust the balance of that. Point. 
indeed, we attenuate the expression. thing to do is if we just rejoin these up is something that I just always tend to do. The thing with flautando is it does have a slightly muffled sound and I find particularly if, if your music's going behind a perforated screen i.e. being played in a cinema that just a little bit of added sparkle can really magic it up a bit. So what I'm going to do is put these harmonics and just try up one octave first and see what that sounds like. Right, two octaves up. reverb bus going to a fab filter reverb. Just just adds just a little bit of something. A nice trick actually with uh, harmonics, which is a lot of fun, is let's have a look at these. Okay, let's go down to, well, maybe let's do one octave down first. And then here, another octave is actually playing harmonics the other way. Because they have this sparkly quality, they really take to being pitched down quite beautifully. two octaves. Not that I'm going to use it for this example, but it's just a funny little trick it's for a very kind of alien sound. Oh, that's nice. Okay, whilst the flautando sound is beautiful, um, what I do find is it, it lacks expression. So I want to get a, a little bit bigger and I want more definition in the bottom end. Also, there's this sucking between the notes because it's not legato that we need to address. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. One is dousing it in reverb, which I have done. And then what I'm going to do is just going to reinforce the bottom end with some chamber strings. So both the cellos and basses are in legato and I'm just gonna take these down. So I'm not tuning it, so I'm not actually tuning the sample down, I'm just making it sound an octave lower. So then when you combine the cellos and basses, there we go. So let's just reinforce the bottom end as it comes in here. abrupt at the end there. So you can hear 
that actually the, the different sections are kind of undulating slightly differently. So if we were to compare this to this, you can see that there's kind of different things going on between the sections. And what's fun about that is it, that's when it really feels like it's coming to life. And it's on a psychological level. It's not something you can really hear. It's something that you just feel. You feel that there's life between the different sections, which is why I didn't copy the, the bottom end part from here and simply pasted it here and took the rest of the parts out. Now, something I'd also like to do is just take care of that um, top end part here. I'm going to do that with uh, first violins. Just join them up a bit at the top there. It's also nice stuff like, you know, I know that there'll be people go, oh, you didn't all come off together. Well, you don't in real life in the middle of a performance. So that's kind of quite a nice way of, uh, of adding a bit of reality. Just checking these all overlap, which they have to in order for the legato to kind of catch. Finally, just for a bit of extra oomph, what I am going to do is I'm going to replay in the entire part from here, but using Consordino, just an entire section. A lot more strident, a lot brighter sounding. And this is just something I'm gonna gradually introduce. But first, let me do it with two hands, so I don't have to do it twice. And if I've forgotten what I've done, what I tend to do is just play along with I think uh, we've got some a little bit of automation stuff going on here with this one. Yeah, let's uh, just sort this all out. I think it's because I doubled up the parts. I didn't hear it, but uh, just for sanity's sake, right there we go. So it's not jumping all over the place. capture record there. So what I'm going to do with this is just just gently edge it in. Again, just recording over the top. previous videos I've shown you how to voice stuff up and one of the real ways of not getting that kind of sucky sound is to convert everything into legatos but I do love the texture of the flautanda and I think you can obfuscate the fact that the the notes don't join up by adding reverb adding those harmonics and then adding some key legatos within there uh, one of the surefire ways of really blurring those transitions is to actually put a little bit of delay on which is uh, very naughty and we mustn't tell anyone about this. But uh, let's just have a listen to this. If we copy that delay across, just a little schnufter.
Now, if we have a look at the kind of shapes here, it, again, expression a little less interesting than um, the modulation. But you can see that there are patterns here. And I know a lot of composers, when they're writing with two hands, simply draw in the automation afterwards. do is simply do this kind of step wise kind of motion there and similar with the expression slightly less detailed just kind of steady crescendo and then off there so let's have a listen to that A lot of you ask why I don't use pedals. Well, you definitely need two controllers, for me anyway. You need to, to get your full kind of dynamic range. You need expression and uh, mo modulation. So I, as you probably noticed, you can see that these notes are not joined together and that's because of heinous use of the sustain pedal. You can see there. So I don't have enough feet uh, to, to, to use expression uh, pedals, but also I've been programming for 25 years now and it's just, it's just what I've got used to. I know people who actually don't even play music in. I mean, these hugely successful composers who literally actually paint it all in and have got really fast over the last 10, 15 years at doing that and then drawing in the automation. It's just different ways of inputting your ideas into your computer machine. And um, I prefer playing the data in rather than writing it in because I guess I can imprint a little bit of kind of physicality into that process. Any human elements that you can introduce to your work, you'll notice, for example, I'm not quantizing, I'm used to playing ahead of the, the click. Uh, the, all of those kind of human elements and all of that variation and chaos, the more you can put in, I think the more viable it is as a demo. So thanks for, for watching and uh, sorry to keep going on about um, orchestral controllers, but um, if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I've got mm, something very, very exciting to show you in the next one. So, uh, or it might be the one after. So subscribe if you haven't done. Do ding that bell if you want to be notified when I put a video up. Thanks for watching to the end. One of those for Pierre. I feel. Thank you, Pierre. See you soon.